So last time I introduced the Lagrangian inversion theorem, and, and just to remind you, what that theorem states is that for any, any well-behaving function, uh, y of x, we can express it in terms of some fixed point, y not, plus a sum, just like we have in Taylor series, where we have some constant times x minus f of y not to the n over n factorial, with that cn being given by being given by a limit with y going to y not dn minus one by dyn minus one, and then this quantity right here, y minus y not over f of y minus f of y not all to the n and then we've got it all right so <clears throat> this is this is some big formula right here uh what's an example that we can actually do to see this in, in action uh so one 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 great and and i'll also add because it's it's an important point that we're, we're saying that x is a function of y in, in in this same form that we have right here well, we know what we know. One function that's exactly defined like this. We know that the Lambert W function is defined as as a function of y. It's x is equal to y e to the y. And so what that means is that we can get a series representation for the Lambert W function using using this guy up here. And so that's what I want to do. And so the first thing uh, the first thing to do is to decide what are y not is going to be and hence what our f of y not is going to be and and with the Lambert w function there's a very clear choice uh, because we know that uh, the point zero uh, is, is, is a great solution here if we pick uh, y equal to zero then we have x equal to zero so if we center this thing at y not equal to zero then we're going to have f of y not equal to zero and a whole bunch of this uh, is going to simplify by a ton uh, and so that's what I want to do. I'm going to say, let's let, and I'll, and I'll change colors here. Let's let y not be equal to zero. And hence, f of y not is equal to zero. Or, or here our f of y not is going to be y e to the y. So, so zero is zero. All right, so what does that mean? That means that our, our Lambert W, and I'll write this a little higher, our Lambert W of X is equal to zero plus, then we have some series, N equals one to infinity, CN X to the N over N factorial. All right, this, this, is, this is nice and pretty. What about these CNs? That's usually where things get tough, or at least it looks like it. So let's, let's, let's try and evaluate that. So cn is equal to a limit with y going to, in this case, 0. We have our derivative right here. And then what do we have? We have y raised to the n over f of y. Well, what's f of y? f of y is y e to the y. Uh, this whole thing raised to the n. Okay, great. Well, immediately we see that these y's cancel out. And this thing simplifies to limit y going to 0. dn minus 1 over dy n minus 1. And then what's going on here? Well, we have e to the minus y raised to the n. So e to the, e to the minus n y. Okay, great. And well, this is this is easy to evaluate, right? You know, we, we know how to take derivatives of exponential functions. So the, so this thing is going to become. Let's see, we take n derivatives. We're going to get limit y going to zero. Uh, n minus one derivatives. That's going to be minus n. To the n minus one e to the minus n y, and this limit's easy to take because the only y shows up here. So this is going to be minus n to the n minus one. Okay, well, we've done it. We've done it. Uh, our series representation for our Lambert W function, W of x is equal to 
sum n equals one to infinity. We have this cn right here, so minus n to the n minus one over n factorial times x to the n. And that right there is one pretty series. So we see right here that using this Lagrangian inversion theorem, in this case, wasn't all that complicated because uh, the only hard part, right, is, is figuring out what these CNs are. And in this case, for the function we consider, that, that ended up being a lot easier um, than trying to figure out this thing using uh, Taylor series would have been. Uh, and so this is great. This is a really, a really simple series representation for our Lambert W function, uh, centered at zero. The only thing that we might be concerned about, and, and, and maybe you've noticed this, is that the form of our series, it's alternating. We have a minus sign right here, so we're going to have terms, terms that are alternate, alternating in sign. But we also have these coefficients right here growing because we have an n factorial in the denominator, but then we have an n to the n minus 1 in the numerator. And so this, this top is going to end up growing faster than the denominator. And what that means is that Unlike a series, a nice series like, say, the exponential function, where that series converges everywhere in x, this series may not converge everywhere in x. And so this is one of those few cases where we really should actually look at when this series converges, because that's going to be um, that's going to be important to note, because we 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 actually care about knowing uh, when when this function is actually um, usable, when when this series is usable. And I'll, and I'll just write out, j just so that's actually clear that we have this issue, I'll write out a few terms of the series. So coefficient of one, coefficient of one, three halves, eight thirds, plus dot, dot, dot. And so you, you can kind of see this numerator is gonna be growing really fast compared to the denominator. And so, so we gotta know when this thing's actually useful. When, 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 when are we actually allowed to use this thing? Uh, and so the way that I'm going to do that is using the ratio test. And I'll, and I'll go on to a new, a new page for this. So just a reminder, uh, the, for the ratio test, the rule is that if, we're, if we have some series, some a n, it converges absolutely if, if we have that the limit as in going to infinity the absolute value a n plus one over a n being less than one. If it's greater than one, then it diverges. Uh, and so really what we want to do is we want to figure out, well, we, we want to look at this ratio for, for our case with the Lambert W function. And so just a little reminder, our series, our series from the other page was W of X equal to sum and equals one to infinity minus n to the n minus one over n factorial x to the n. Okay, uh, so let's construct this ratio here. So we're, 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 we're looking at, we're looking at some limit and going to infinity, uh, a n plus one. So what's a n plus one? Well, take n plus one. So we have uh, minus one, or rather minus n minus one raised to the n over n plus one factorial x to the n plus one. Okay, now we gotta divide by that by a to the n. So we're gonna have n factorial on top divided by x to the n minus n to the n minus one. Absolute value. So the first thing to note is that because we have this absolute value, uh, we can get rid of all of these pesky minus signs. So that's nice. Um, the other thing is that, uh, well, a lot of this simplifies really nicely. We have an x to the n, x to the n plus one down here. So that cancels out with that. We have an n plus one factorial and an n factorial. So that goes away and we're just left with n plus one. And then we have uh, these terms right here that are, that are, well, yeah, and then, so, so, so yeah, let's, let's not jump ahead too far. Let's, let's write this down. So we have limit and then going to infinity. So what do we have left? We have n plus one 
raised to the n over, we have an n minus, an n plus one right here, n plus one. And then over here we have, what do we have? We have an n to the n minus one. And we have an, an x on top. Okay, that's great. But we have another simplification we can do here. We have an n plus one to the n up here and plus one in the denominator. That'll simplify to n plus one to the n minus one. Uh, so this becomes limit to infinity n plus one to the n minus one over n to the n minus one x. But hey, these have the same exponents, so we can combine them. And what happens? We get a limit n going to infinity. And this is where the magic happens. One plus one over n raised to the n minus one. Now this hopefully is looking a little bit familiar. This almost looks like the way that we're taught uh, the series representation for e, or, or the limit definition of e. You'll, you'll recall that uh, e is equal to limit in going to infinity uh, 1 plus 1 over n to the n. The, this, this hopefully is, is with you from calculus. Um, so what is this thing then? Well, I mean, it, it's actually the same thing. And it's, it's the same thing because this n minus 1 in the, in the limit of large n just looks like n. Uh, and so when we, when we actually take this limit as n goes to infinity, this thing scales like n, this thing scales like n. So what you end up with, uh, what you end up with is e times x. And, and let, let, me, let me spend a little bit more time on this because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not running a fast one by you. Uh, it, it really is the case that e is equal to this thing right here. It's also equal to you know, n minus 7. It's also equal to n minus 700. Um, it's also equal to all of these things because in that limit, the, the limit is the only thing that really matters here. When we take this limit, uh, the fact that n is getting huge and huge and huge means that this 700 is going to become less and less important to such a point where it's as if it wasn't even there in, in that limit where n goes to infinity. And so this right here, when we take this limit, really is e times x. And so we've just about, we've just about got where we want to be. The only thing to remember is just that uh, in order for this thing to converge absolutely, we need it to be less than 1. And so at long last, we get our solution. We know that the radius of convergence for this series, the values of x for which this thing is, is well defined or is defined, is x, absolute value of x, less than 1 over e. So we've got a radius of 1 over e uh, where, this, where this series representation is valid. Boom, 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 boom. So I think I'll I'll stop it here. Uh, th this is this has been a, a a little bit on the series representation for the Lambert W function. Um, we 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 saw how 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 in this case how easy it was to use the Lagrange Lagrange inversion theorem, and then how using the ratio test we were able to see uh, when that series is actually valid valid. Uh, so I'll stop it here. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video.